how do justices reach a decision on a judgment? Sometimes we don't all reach the same decision, but uh, the process under which we reach our final decisions is, is one, uh, first of all, of debate between ourselves uh, and then further reflection. Uh, the process of writing down the judgment, which we all do in one way or another, clarifies the mind and sometimes leads you to a conclusion uh, that you hadn't initially appreciated you were going to reach. You listen to the arguments presented by counsel and of course you have the argument for one side and you listen to that and it sounds tremendously convincing and then you have the argument for the other side and you listen to that and it sounds tremendously convincing. Then we have a meeting immediately after the hearing at which we um, announce our preliminary views about what the answer is and the reasons for it uh, and so you listen to your colleagues views as well. At that meeting the youngest judge speaks first and we go through the judges. I think we've recently resolved to keep those presentations fairly short and then have a, a general discussion on the particular points which arise. And then of course you go away, study the papers further, write your own judgments. I like to try to write them um, as soon as possible or at least get a first draft out as soon as possible while it's fresh in my mind because I find that it, once you move on to the next case and the next case it becomes quite difficult to retrieve One's, one's thoughts. The cases we have to decide here are usually quite narrow and I'm not really able to say in advance which way they're going to go uh, because I, I don't believe that these so-called political views have any weight with us at all. We're looking for the, the right decision according to law. I think we managed to achieve the practical move across from the House of Lords um, quite efficiently. Here on the wall we have something quite significant. Um, this is the uh, bronze bas relief the Queen unveiled when she came to perform the official opening of the court two years ago on the 16th of October 2009. One of the issues that's been raised, in fact, I think yesterday in the Constitution Committee in, in the House of Lords, was whether there should be um, confirmation hearings, US uh, style confirmation hearings for justices. Would you be in favour of that? I wouldn't. I think the people who are advocating confirmation hearings don't fully understand the nature of our jurisdiction. I, I th I'm sure it's prompted by the idea that we are dealing with human rights issues and therefore there are, uh, there's a possible conflict between the uh, unelected judges dealing with these issues and the elected politicians who of course have to face their constituents and explain why and receive complaints about uh, decisions we take. I'm not sure what they would seek to ascertain um, uh, and um, there is the risk that um, political points would be made. We, have a, we, we can cover anything from the most extremely complicated patent action, um, tax cases, um, uh, commercial law cases, insurance, shipping and so on which require expertise and the people with that kind of expertise may not um, appeal themselves to these people at the political hearings and we can't uh, afford I think for the confirmation hearing to say to turn somebody down because they don't really understand how that person is going to fit into their image of somebody who's going to deal with human rights issues. Now of course it's true that because they're here they may find they have to decide them but the reason why they are here these experts in particular fields of law is because we need them in order to maintain the quality of decision taking that we have and it's absolutely vital that the Supreme Court has people of real calibre in particular areas of law. One solution uh, would be to uh, enlarge the appointing commission uh, and include some senior politicians, one from each party, so that they take part in the selection process but they don't dominate it. That would be one possibility. The JCPC, as we call it, uh, it was basically the Court of Appeal for the British Empire. There are a number of uh, independent Commonwealth countries which continue to use it. Death row cases from the Caribbean and other countries that still have the death penalty are brought here for decision? Uh, they can be, yes, they can be. If there is um, any scope for an appeal, then we do still get those cases, yes. Do, do you think it's necessary for the composition of the Supreme Court bench to reflect society? It's not necessary in the sense that uh, an elected body um, should uh, um, reflect society, but um, I think it's extremely important that the bench should not um, be seen um, 
as, or indeed be, a narrowly based group of the same sort of men. What does it feel like as the only woman on the Supreme Court? Well, most of the time you're not conscious of it, really, but some of the time you do feel, um, well, it would be nice to have some company. It would be nice for there to be a critical mass, three or four or more women, because then it's not something that anybody's going to comment on. It would be good to be seen just as an individual judge and jurist rather than as the woman. Is there some need for action intervention? To in positive discrimination, do you mean? Possibly, yeah. Uh, I'm not in favour of positive discrimination. What I think needs to be done is, is much greater encouragement uh, to women uh, to apply to go on the bench. Uh, steps should be taken to make it easier for them to remain in the law. Uh, at this level, at the Supreme Court, one is drawing one's candidates from a fairly small pool and um, <coughs> the pool is fed from bigger lakes further down. Uh, the important thing is to make sure you've got um, plenty of diversity uh, in the initial reservoirs so that that then feeds up uh, and ultimately feeds into the Supreme Court. It takes time. Things are changing. Do you think it's merely a matter of time before? No, no, I don't, think it's, do merely, think, no, I don't think it's merely a matter of time. I think... Greater executive, you need to take initiative. Yes, people uh, have been saying it's a matter of time for a very long time. Uh, women have been uh, joining the legal profession in as great, if not greater, numbers than men for 25 or more years, um, more than that. Uh, but of course what happens is uh, they start in practice, um, but there's a sizeable attrition rate, both from the main uh, city solicitors firms uh, and from the bar. And so although they start roughly equal, 10, 15 years later, they're not. Uh, and sometimes women go into uh, less visible forms of practice. Now, my answer to that would be to say, well, let's think of those less visible forms of practice. Let's think of the very excellent people who are doing that, but rather than just thinking about the, the top QCs, although there are, of course, some very, very good uh, top women QCs. Um, we're now in courtroom one which is our largest court and we have two fixed cameras there and two fixed cameras behind you and that's the same in all three of our courtrooms and we film um, everything we do. One of the ways in which the court has obviously led in being uh, led the way in being transparent has been in being televised. It hasn't impinged on me, on me at all. Uh, I, I, I know there is a television camera stuck in the in a little corner. I'm simply not aware of it. Uh, I was too um, pusillanimous to go uh, and uh, have a look at, uh, at uh, how I appeared on the television. I didn't really want to know. We are being filmed all the time uh, and we're not really very conscious of it except that sometimes if the cameras move, you know, you have this funny noise going on and you think, oh, what's that? Yes, and then you remember. If it was a trial where there were witnesses having to give evidence, uh, being in court for the very first time, um, not regularly in court, uh, there might be quite serious problems of, of whether their evidence would be affected by the knowledge that they were being filmed. Well, I have a long history in television because I, I um, introduced the idea in Scotland um, about 12 years ago, 10 years ago, and I've always been in favour of the idea that so long as the interests of justice are not compromised, um, the more people can understand the way a court works, the better. I'm not going to encourage courtroom dramatics, as I think one... Uh, as I think the Attorney General suggested, or, or worried about the other day. Well, from my own experience, the answer is no. But I've, uh, there may be, I mean, they may be the odd maverick who, who would be. I have seen um, the American trial process, and I think uh, if you have cameras in relation to matters like evidence, where you're trying to influence a jury um, with the way questions are put and answered, uh, um, that can be quite detrimental, having watched um, at least one American uh, criminal trial. Uh, uh, being televised. I think in some parts of the lower courts it would be undesirable. In, in other parts, no doubt, um, where you're dealing with neutral argument or with, perhaps with an exercise like sentencing, um, it would be um, perfectly possible. It's not going to happen overnight that there'll be television of the lower courts. There's a difference between televising civil courts and televising criminal courts. I've had a fair amount of experience of television cameras and 
people think that they're going to um, <coughs> dominate the hearing and people are going to play to the camera and so on, my experience is that you very quickly forget that there's a camera there at all. I'm not surprised that there are differing opinions. I mean, that, that is inevitable uh, at, th at this level with the, the nature of the cases that we hear. They're complicated, they're difficult. Uh, they, s some of them involve questions of, of, of judgment uh, and, and almost philosophy, I mean, approach to life. Uh, and so uh, it's not at all surprising uh, that there are different uh, views. Um, I think it. I think that that isn't a problem. That the fact, in fact, I think it's very healthy that there are different views. Uh, there are sometimes people who complain that uh, there are too many people who are of the same view who who write judgments which are not really very different from other judgments. But that's another sub another subject.